Hello, fellow Movie Crusaders, and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be reviewing the latest from the Jordan Peele group, uh, the horror thriller Antebellum. Um, now, this movie was originally supposed to be released in April of this year, but obviously because of COVID, that did not happen. So it got released on On Demand for most people. And um, I remember seeing the trailer for this the first time early, like early, early this year. And the trailer itself was intriguing because we all know Jordan Peele. Now, Jordan Peele didn't direct this. He, he helped produce it. Um, this was actually directed by uh, Gerard or Jared, Gerard or Jared Bush and Christopher Renz. Um, now, with the uniqueness of this film, it had kind of almost like a Twilight Zone-esque kind of uh, development with it. Now, I don't want to go into spoilers, obviously, because there's supposed to be twists and, and stuff like that. But let's face it, if you've seen the trailer of the film, you know the twist already for the most part. So I'm not going to try to spoil what I'm seeing here. But I mean, if you saw the first trailer or even the second trailer, you kind of know what the twist is. Um, but the general plot of, of Antebellum is you got successful author Veronica Hen Henley finds herself trapped in a horrifying reality and must uncover the mind-bending mystery before it's too late. Uh, now, like I said, when I first saw this trailer, it was it was unique in, in terms of a Twilight Zone-esque kind of situation, which Jordan Peele just recently redid the Twilight Zone. So I thought it was right up that kind of alley. Um, and with with the possibilities of what this, uh, the ramifications of this movie, with obviously today's current landscape, this movie was made way before a lot of this stuff of today's like current situation had happened. So it was kind of weird that this movie is really kind of lined up perfectly with what's going on in today's situations. But nonetheless, I'm not looking at it with current today's thing. I'm, I'm going to review this basically just on the movie as a whole, as itself, not taking real world um, politicalness or real world uh, stuff going on with this. So this review is strictly just on the movie itself. Um, Janelle, uh, or not, yeah, Janelle Monet, uh, she plays obviously the lead actor, um, Veronica, uh, and Janelle Monet, I've always been intrigued by her performances and, and stuff that I've seen her in, um, so having her kind of be this kind of breakout role of taking the full on lead in this film, because for the most part, you follow her from beginning to end very, there's only like maybe one to one, two or three scenes where you don't have her on screen the entire time. So giving her the full uh, you know, head head actress um, position where she is having to carry this entire film was definitely something that I was intrigued to see how she would do. And I think Janelle does a really solid job of that. Um, it's definitely one of the better female performances I've seen this year. Um, and, and I think that performance wise, for the most part, everyone does a really solid job in this film. Um, cinematography wise, this film looks great. Uh, when we do go to the the plantation um, areas. There are some great uh, scenery shots. The, the opening, the opening number, as brutal and and kind of hard to watch as it was, it looked gorgeous, which is kind of weird to say. Um, but there's a lot of great scenes that are just shot beautifully. They look fantastic, especially on on a high definition TV. Or if it would have been in theaters, it probably would have looked great on a big screen uh, theater. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, in terms of the cast, I like I enjoyed pretty much everyone. I think Jenna Malone did a solid job as a uh, Elizabeth, um, Eric Lang as uh, I think they just call him him in the movie. Um, all I, I, I and uh, also um, Jack Huston as Captain Jasper. I think all of them put on a solid per performance throughout the film. I hear a lot of people really being awesome or really liking uh, Gabarice uh, Sabib um, from Precious. I personally couldn't stand her character in the film. Maybe that's because she put on such a great performance of it, but her character drove me insane the entire film. She's one of those friends that you're friends with her because you don't want her as an enemy, and she just seemed like a horrible, horrible person throughout this film. And it's just because she's probably spunky and she's just real confident in herself, but I just could not stand her on screen the entire time through this movie. Now, like I said, performances and cinematography aside, here's the main problem with Antebellum. It's, there's so much that this film could have been. With the base of the plot and what the story is supposed to be and the twist and all that kind of stuff, this film could have been Get Out level uh, or even Us level, which I loved Get Out and I loved Us. I thought those were both fantastic films. This had the ability 
to be those kinds of films with with the with the the plot and the story that they were trying to tell the possibilities of this being one of another breakout horror film was very easy to accomplish here's the problem the, it's it's like looking at a giant cake the cake looks fantastic it looks delicious you just want to sink your hands in and just gobble it all up but then once you pass through the frosting it's empty there's just no there's nothing in there there and, and that's the main problem is on surface level this film looks like it could be an amazing horror thriller but the story itself is just lacking the the, the choice that they made in terms of the first act to the second act and kind of swapping them, I think was a poor decision because like I said, they gave away the twist in the trailer. So doing that after you've already released a trailer like that really kind of defeats the whole purpose of swapping acts one and act two. Um, character development. Outside of Janelle Monae's Veronica, um, there isn't any. There's no reasoning outside of just being racist um, there's no explanation or reasoning for why the people that are doing the stuff in this movie, like I said, I gotta be very wordy based off of the spoilers, but the reasons behind it never explained the characters around Veronica that you're supposed to care about whether they live or die, not given anything towards, um, towards character development to give them time. So that way they're their deaths or survivals matter. The villains of the story, outside of them just being racist, there's no character development building these characters up. So that way, when the inevitable outcomes happen to these characters, you don't care. Um, you really don't care about anyone in this film outside of Veronica, and they want you to care. They, they put they do these scenes with the outcomes of, of life and death between these characters and they're supposed to hold weight. But the problem is, is you haven't done the job and you haven't put in the work to get us to care about any of the characters outside of Veronica. And that is the main problem with this film is that like I said, on surface level, it looks fantastic. But once you actually go into the actual story, it's very bland. It's very um, lacking in terms of it. It's, it's a whole lot of fluff and no, substance in the film overall and that is what's going to hold back antebellum from being something that will be talked about as a, a fantastic film because the the backstories for the characters the reasoning for the characters the why of everything um it's just not there it's it's the m night Shyamalan-esque twist is is borderline like the village where it was just utterly disappointing and like i said the twist isn't even a twist because it's in the trailer so for them to kind of play it, it's it's kind of like 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 the hunt earlier this year. They kept trying to hide Hillary Swank throughout the film, but Hillary Swank's in the trailer. So having her be revealed at the end as the main person doesn't hold a whole lot of weight when the trailer gave it away right from the get go. And the same thing goes with Antebellum for the for the twist in this film. Like I said, Janelle Monae did a great job, but and so did Jenna Malone and the rest of the people I mentioned. But that's just them acting. Their characters themselves outside of um, outside of Veronica. You don't know who these people are. You don't know why they're doing what they're doing or why they're choosing to do this over, you know, these other people or these other um, prisoners with, with Veronica. You're not you're not getting anything uh, from these characters to hold any emotional weight to them. And when certain ones die or don't die, they're just like, OK, that's fine. And that's the main problem with Antebellum is you it likes it looks great. It's acted very, very well. But ultimately, it just leaves you empty by the end of the film. And then halfway through the film, like I said I was watching it at home because it was on on demand. I was fighting everything not to go look on my phone out of just boredom. Not because it was not because what I was watching was boring. It was just because there, I didn't care about any of the characters in the film because the directors didn't make me care. The directors didn't give me anything to care about with the characters overall. And that is ultimately the biggest problem is that the script while clever in its sense, does not do its job in making the audience care about the outcomes, the characters, the who, what, when, where's, and why's of why you should care about this movie outside of what the movie on the surface level is supposed to be. It's like, if you don't care about this movie because of the surface level, then something's wrong with you. No, that's not the problem at all. The problem is that you have done a failure of trying to get me as the viewer to care. 12, 12, day, uh, 12 Years a Slave did a phenomenal job of doing that blind spotting all these movies did a fantastic job of getting me to care about the characters and and their motivations 
and their heartaches and, and the reasons why they have to live the lives the way they do and the stuff and the hurdles they have to go over. Never once in Antebellum did I care about Veronica outside of she was taken and she needs to escape and go home. Some of the decision makings in this movie weren't the brightest either. So ultimately just the, the execution of everything in this film, it was just not good in terms of overall, like I said, surface level, great, everything else bad. So going to overall recommendations, I cannot recommend Antebellum to you. Um, it is definitely something that when we go through <laughs> uh, years to come and they show trailers where the producers of Get Out and Us uh, get shown on the trailer to try to pique people's interest, Antebellum, I feel, will not be on that list with them. Um, so in terms of recommendations, I cannot recommend Antebellum to you. It's definitely not worth the money to pay to see it on on demand. Uh it was just a big miss in terms of what could have potentially been another huge uh, horror thriller from the people uh, that produced Get Out and Us and obviously Jordan Peele. Uh, so going to my overall score, I'm going to give Antebellum a 5.3 out of 10. Like I said, I, I thought the acting was great and I thought the cinematography was great, but the story itself was not. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up with Sean's Week Crusades. And, of course, don't forget to follow some of the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, I know I said this like two reviews ago, but I didn't think I was going to see both these films. Um, Enola Holmes comes out on Wednesday on Netflix, so be on the lookout for that review. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, baby Crusaders.